The notes for this are on the explicit and recursive equations. We're looking at just the linear kind right now, and this is what's covered in section 1.2. First, we'll deal with explicit equations. Explicit equations are equations where we can find any term without needing to know any other term. And this is sort of in contrast to recursive equations, and we'll deal with that in a moment. The linear explicit equations are often written in the form f of n equals a n plus b. And the letters a and b represent particular things. The letter a represents the constant difference. meaning the what we are adding each time. Remember, adding over and over and over again is multiplying. And the B represents um, the value of the equation when n equals 0. So we often talk about this as being the y-intercept, or in this section we often talk about it as being term 0. Um, let's look at an example. So something that you might be asked about explicit equations are something like what does f of n equals 4n plus 1 mean? So remember, the 1 is the b, and it represents um, the equation when n equals 0, or term 0, or the y-intercept. So we might say that our um, sequence, which is what you were dealing with in this section, a list of numbers, starts at 1, and then remember the 4 is what we're, is the constant difference, it's what we're adding each time. So the sequence starts at 1, and you add 4 to get the next term. So if I want to write that out, I would write 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, etc. Now, with this, however, I can also we'll do a second example f of n equals negative 2n plus 5. Find the fourth term. So what we're meaning here is we want to basically find f of 4, which from the previous notes on, on function notation, we can do without knowing anything else besides the explicit equation. So I plug in 4, and then I simplify. second way these equations can appear is in what we call recursive. And recursive equations um, are a representation that allow us um, to create a sequence based upon the previous term. So this you will often see represented as f of 0 equals some value, and then f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus some value. Now, 
the important part about this notation is that I could actually write all of this notation in words saying term 0 is B, the current term is the previous term plus D. So this notation, it looks fancy and maybe a little intimidating, but it actually just says the current one I'm looking at is based upon the previous one. So I look one step behind to get where I'm at currently. And once I see my step behind, I add D to that. Um, so a couple of other notes here. So F of N minus one means previous term. So f of n plus 1 means the next term. So let's do a quick example with this. What does f of n plus 8 mean? Um, and what this means is that, so plus one is the next term. And if I keep going, I'm going to go all the way out to eight terms later. So I'm looking for the eighth term from where I currently am. So if I'm currently at step one, I would go another step and another step all the way out to step nine. So one to nine is eight steps. Um, let's look at an example. What does f of zero equals negative seven? f of n equals f of n minus one plus six mean. So this means that I start at negative seven and add six each time. So the meaning of, of these two representations is the same. It's just a matter of the way that they are communicating that, that information. Um, so if I start at negative seven and I add six each time, etc. Now, the catch with this is that if I do an example very similar to one that I did at the end of the explicit equation, and I say we have f of n equals f of n minus one plus six, where f of zero equals negative seven, and I say find f of three, I can't simply plug in f of three here because it, it means I would have to know f of two, but I don't know f of two, which means then I'd have to find f of one and f of zero. So it means I'd have to keep going backwards. However, if we look at the list we created right here, um, which would be the list I would create for this same problem, they're the same problem, so negative six, negative Sorry, negative 7, negative 1, 5, 11, 17. So this is f of 0, which makes this one f of 1, which makes this one f of 2, which makes 11 f of 3. So now we can say f of 3 equals 11. So unlike the explicit, in order to find the recursive, a value in the recursive equation, I'm going to need to actually write out the list of numbers and, and count uh, term 0, 1, 2, 3. Where up here in the explicit, I'll, all I had to do was just plug it in. So I could find f of 10 very easily or f of 100 very easily. 
Here, finding f of 100.